Uh, joining us now, uh, Troy uh, La Revere, uh, but uh, Troy, you're gonna help me with that pronunciation in a second. Uh, running for mayor in Chicago, uh, Troy, how do we say it? La Ravier, Troy La Ravier. La Ravier. Yes, uh, sir. Okay, uh, well, you gotta get used to that name because Troy, um, I'm super psyched about you. <laughs> uh, I, I think that uh, your chance of winning is significant. I think your chance of doing some great things in the future is significant. And and so I'm really glad to get a chance to talk to you. So um, you're running in Chicago, you've got a couple of proposals that I think are important and different. But before we get to that, I wanna get into your background just a little bit. Um, so you were in two different Bernie Sanders ads, which is That's interesting. Right. That's and right. um, and you campaigned for Chuy Garcia when he ran for mayor against Rahm yeah. Emanuel, but he's not in the race uh, this time around. So, right. is it fair to conclude that that you're the most progressive person in this very crowded field? I'm glad you asked that. Uh, they asked Chuy that same question at a, on a show, a local show called Chicago Tonight. They ran down the list of all of the candidates and asked him which ones were progressive. Uh, and there was only one name he responded to with a yes, and that was my name. And so I felt some affirmation in that because Chewy and I are both associated with the Bernie Sanders campaign with the progressive platform. Uh, and when he named me as the only progressive in, in the in the uh, field, uh, that was a big boost to, to the campaign. And um, next, of course, would be the Bernie Sanders uh, endorsement. Uh, but you know, Bernie is notorious for waiting until the last uh, month or so, and so. But we're still going to push for it. All right, uh, and and given that you were in a couple of his ads, I think that's probably a fair ask of you to, to ask for that endorsement. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, and I think that your uh, background, which you uh, talk about in the ad that we're showing, uh, is also really interesting. So you were a student, a teacher, a principal, and a parent at public and private schools in Chicago. So that's right. So let's start with that topic. Uh, here's a broad question. Uh, what are What's wrong with the schools in Chicago? They're understaffed and they're set up to fail. That's what's wrong with this. this it's not necessarily anything wrong with the schools. It's what's wrong with the government that runs the schools. Chicago Public Schools is the most understaffed school system in Illinois. We rank 857th out of 858 school districts and the ratio of students to certified staff. What that basically means is that the average Illinois school has 59 staff for every 600 kids. Chicago has 37 staff for every 600 kids. And so we have 22 fewer staff, not than the top Illinois schools, but 22 fewer staff than the average Illinois schools. And that was not the case before Rahm Emanuel took over. He came in and began a systematic program of dis investment in our neighborhood schools in an attempt to set them up for, set them up to fail. And so one of my proposals is that we institute or that we create 10,000 new teaching and staff positions for Chicago public schools so that our kids can get the staffing that they deserve. That means 22 additional staff on average in every Chicago public school. That means a counselor, it means a social worker, it means um, a truant officer, it means a case manager. It means more teachers to reduce class sizes, someone to teach music, drama, theater, arts, a foreign language. The same thing Rom's kids get over at the lab school. We want for every child in Chicago, and we believe we can have it. Uh, and that's what our proposal is designed to do. So Republicans and, and corporate Democrats like Rahm Emanuel uh, would then say, oh, look at all the things that they want. But wait a minute, that's what everybody else in Illinois gets. Why, why is it unfair for Chicago to ask for the minimum, for the minimum of what everybody else gets? And, and, well, and, and it's that mentality that drives me crazy. But Troy, to follow up on that, I wanted to ask you. So Rahm Emanuel, I, you and I know differently, but in Washington is a celebrated Democrat. So why do you think he systematically underfunded the schools in Chicago? Well, corruption, one of the things that attracted me to the Bernie Sanders campaign was his analysis of the basic problem of our system, that our economy funnels most of our wealth to a small portion or a tiny percentage of our population. And then that small group of people then use that wealth to corrupt our political system, to make it work for them and not for us. And Rahm Emanuel is 
the perfect example of the kind of politician who's been corrupted by that money. The Chicago Tribune did a front page story in 2015 and repeated that story in 2017 that showed that his top 60 of his top 100 campaign contributors all got something in return from our public tax dollars. 60 of his top 100 got a contract, got an appointment, got some kind of benefit from City Hall. There's a custodial company right now that's leaving Chicago public schools filthy. They're getting hundreds of millions of dollars from our tax dollars. Oh, and also, by the way, they just happen to donate a quarter million dollars to our mayor's campaign fund. He is wholly and completely corrupt. It is open, it is blatant, and there's no candidate in the race for Chicago who's willing to simply say it. Not just as a candidate, but who has a record of saying it for the last five years, the last six years, and even saying it when I was subject to being disciplined and fired by the same administration that I was criticizing. I was a Chicago public school principal and risked my job repeatedly to expose one corrupt contract after another because my job was not as important as the future of the young people that I was serving. And that's exactly the attitude that I'm going to take in the city hall. Ah, I love your strength. Uh, there's like three other things that spring from that I, I wanna do as quickly as we can. So you mentioned that vote. Uh, you were up for uh, presidency of the Chicago Principals and Administrators Association. Logically so, you'd actually done a great work at your the school that you were principal at. I wanna get back to that as well. Uh, and then what happened next? So I was up for the presidency of the Principals Association after spending several years relentlessly critiquing the corruption in this administration. I exposed the custodial scandal, charter school scandals. I exposed the Barbara Bird Bennett scandal. And at, by that time, I was really focused on this custodial scandal. And so I was up for the presidency of the association. And at that time, the Emanuel administration moved in and removed me from my job to create this cloud of suspicion over my name. And they were doing that in hopes of me not, of creating enough of a cloud of suspicion to uh, uh, affect the election. And at the same time they created this crowd of suspicion, they ran another candidate against me. Two of Emmanuel's appointees, their names were actually on his petitions. And so they ran this candidate against me. And they, the, the storyline became, who are the principals going to vote for? Troy LaRavier or Rahm's candidate. So it became somewhat of a stand-in for Troy LaRavier versus Rahm Emanuel's um, competition. And I eventually won that election uh, for the presidency of the Chicago Principals and Administrators Association with over 70% of the vote. Um, and so it backfired. His attempt to remove me actually galvanized principles behind me because they have had to suffer under the same corruption that we suffered under when I was principal at Blaine Elementary School. And they suffered even worse because I was at least in a well-to-do community that could raise money when the budgets got cut. I spoke out on behalf of other communities and other principals who could not do that and they appreciated me speaking out on their behalf and they rewarded me with the presidency of this association as a result. So when you were a principal at Blaine Elementary, it was ranked number one neighborhood school in Chicago. How'd you do that? Three things. Number one, using research and evidence. All too often what the privatizers and the one the people who back the agenda of the 1% do is they use ideology. This insane choice ideology or this school competition ideology that has no basis in the research. What the research actually says is that you invest in building the capacity of the teachers who are in front of the children. And so that's what we did. Number two, I walked into a school, frankly, that was extremely inequitable in how it distributed resources to wealthy white students on one end and black and brown students who were not so wealthy on the other end. And so we systematically began a process of taking the resources that had been historically given to the kids in the gifted program, who were predominantly white kids, and using those resources to actually bring some equity to those kids who have been historically neglected in that program. And that's exactly what I intend to do in the city of Chicago because our city suffers from the same inequity that that school suffered from. And just as that 
program to bring equity to the school. And equity means you give the most to the people who need the most. And Chicago's the exact opposite. We give the most to the people who need the least, and we give the least to the people who need the most. My administration is going to, going to change that. We're going to invest in the south and west sides of this city. And just as it did at Blaine, in terms of investing in those who needed the most, brought up the entire school, investing in the people who need the most in this city is going to bring up all of Chicago. Troy, what I hear in you is strength, and I love it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, it's a crowded field. Rahm Emanuel is not running, uh, and uh, Troy is clearly the most progressive person in the race. Uh, I think that if you're a progressive, uh, you might want to visit TroyForChicago.com, uh, and uh, and obviously uh, he's uncorrupted. So uh, donations and and volunteers make a huge huge difference. Uh, Troy, there's so much more to talk about uh, crime, segregation, et cetera, in Chicago. I look forward to doing that when you're the mayor. Absolutely. Thank All you right. so much for having me. Uh, thank you. The TYT Plus app is now available on iOS and Android. Download to get more TYT content at tyt.com slash app.